But let us pause for a moment of gratitude. Let us thank those who have helped you along this complex, difficult, fun, and amazing journey. Let us say thank you to the faculty members who've dedicated their energy and talents to your intellectual and personal development and helped you learn everything from astronomy to economics, from studio art to sociology, peace and conflict studies, from psychology to history, biology, religion, engineering, and more. Thank you for the staff, members who have engaged you and cared for our beautiful campus, who clean the halls, classrooms, and laboratories, who have advised, nourished, and supported you. Let us say thank you to the alumni who support this institution and today welcome you into the Swarthmore Alumni Association. Thank you to friends who have gathered to be with you. Not one of you has gone through this experience alone. Your friends have been there in good times and have been by your side when you struggled. But most especially today, let us say thank you to your parents, step-parents, and caregivers who have supported your education, who cheered your triumphs, who helped you learn from the problems you confronted, and today are filled with pride. I ask you, class of 2014, to rise, turn, and thank your families. service, the faculty who retire this year. Hans Oberdeek, Professor of Philosophy, Helene Shapiro, Professor of Mathematics, and Philip Weinstein, Professor of English. We recognize as well the following retiring staff members who have served the college for 20 years or longer. Carolyn Anderson, English Department. Alice Balaber, Facilities and Services. Charlotte Lanford, Friends Historical Library. Mary Cooper, Environmental Services. Jeffrey Lott, Communications. Marianne Louvenaire, Dining Services. Joanne Masseri, Office Services. Mary Narkin, Public Safety. Louise Petrilla, McCabe Library, Laura Rideout, Environmental Services, and Suzanne Welsh, Vice President for Finance and Treasurer. Let's and now I want us to take a very special moment and let us give honor and tribute to Ralph Banker Dean, who two years ago on April 29th, we lost. Rabbi would have graduated today. As we celebrate the specialness of this day for each of you, it is fitting also to take this occasion to remember Rabbi, a star that shone brightly in our midst, brilliantly but all too briefly. As we remember Rabbi, his family here with us today, we remember his light, his promise, is one with yours. You'll, your fulfillment of that promise will carry it in his light, his promise. For he was one among us who achieved so much and did so much to support and sustain the friendships he developed with so many of you. His special ability to reach out and touch in significant ways, so many of his fellow students date back to his days even before coming to Swarthmore. He not only assisted his classmates academically, but he also counseled and held up some who were enduring emotional or physical stress. He was gentle and giving, 
succeeding in his academic work while continuing to help others and to support his local community. We remember Robbie with gladness for who he was and for his gifts of love and support for all who knew him. He will always be a treasured member of your class and of our Swarthmore family. Please join me in a moment of silence to honor Robbie. graduating class, I say this every year, is special. But you really are more special. <laughs> you hold the distinction of Swarthmore's one and only sesquicentennial class. As we welcome you into the alumni body today, and I think you make our alumni body now over 20,000, we celebrate 150 years since Swarthmore's founding and 145 commencement, and we anticipate many, many more. I have only a few minutes to represent um, our community by giving you a charge or a blessing or a piece of wisdom from the ages. So let me simply say that I hope this education has set you free. For that is ultimately the promise of a liberal arts education. And that in many ways is what so many of our alumni have experienced. One of our alumni, Roger Smith, class of 1914, describes it in an essay this way. I have known for many years that the greatest value I received from Swarthmore College was freedom to think, speak, and act responsibly. A liberal arts education, so often challenged today in the court of public opinion, serves freedom as its highest goal. It serves the greatest idea of our society, the greatest longing of our soul, the precondition of our hopes and dreams of realizing both justice and love in this world. This education is about serving freedom in the deepest and richest and ever-changing meaning of that word. And it does so by first and foremost, helping one to understand reality to question common pretexts, presuppositions, and beliefs. In the Platonic founding myth of liberal arts, that's how I think of it, Socrates portrays certain persons as living in prisoners in the underground cave, chained by neck and legs, facing the wall in darkness, a fire behind them providing only dim shadows of light. The prisoners can only see shaded and shadowy images of what others are carrying past the cave on a raised platform. But when the prisoner is liberated, he or she is free to see the light. At first it causes pain and confusion. Then he will be able to see the sun and not mere reflections. He will be able to contemplate him as he is. A liberal arts education should help you to see the sun and not mere reflections. From shadows, chains, and darkness, freedom is experiencing, is experienced as seeing the light. Smith, class of 1914, described how before his education he had been, and I quote, fettered politically, socially, religiously by the existing mores and traditions of the small <laughs> farming community from which he came. <clears throat> Only a few of you came from small Midwestern farming communities, as did Mr. Smith and myself. But your education, I hope, has helped you to see the ugly, beautiful, complex reality of the world through your own lenses, and equally but more important through the lenses of others. Sir Francis Bacon thought that education must liberate people from what he called the idols of the mind, and what we might now call an unwillingness to entertain other views, opinions, ideas. The unwillingness to have the courage to topple our own idols and to push against the idols of others. So I hope your education here has accelerated your own freedom or maybe even transformed your sense of freedom. That you've been inspired to think in new ways and to explore new roles of how to live in the world. 
I hope you have come to understand that you are and will always be on a voyage to recreate the world and to reinvent yourself. But freedom is not just liberation from ignorance, inertia, or even superstition. Freedom relates to one's values. And in our democratic way of life, it involves a duty to protect other person's values, hopes, dreams, and desires. When we send you out today, we want you to, as we are reminded every day when we walk past the writing on the wall of the west side of Perish to use well thy freedom. At the Sesquicentennial Symposium on the Future of Liberal Arts this past February, Mary Schmidt Campbell, class of 69, urged us to understand liberal arts <coughs> as creating world makers. Noting that artists were once on the edge of society, she described them as bohemian, <coughs> radical, and usually ignored. Campbell says that artists in film, interactive, and studio arts now see themselves as world makers. She says, world makers constructs knowledge, introduces a new way of understanding the world. This education, a decidedly liberal arts education, sends you out to use your freedom to be world makers. What I wish for you is that you will be an artist in expressing your own freedom. If all the experts are right about the future, you will change jobs many times. You will create your own nonprofits and your businesses. You will live all around the globe, and your lives will be radically different than your parents, and most certainly different than your grandparents. Though we haven't always provided you a garden of ease for this education, we have, I hope, allowed you to forge your freedom to make the world anew. May your struggles, your challenges, your triumphs, your experiments, and your experiences all converge to offer you freedom from ignorance and inertia and make you eager to topple the idols of your mind. But may this freedom also make you live for freedom, for justice, for love, continuously relishing and improving your life and the life of others. Members of the class of 2014, may you commence to use well thy freedom. Thank you.